Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, myself Dr. Amit Maheshwari. Today is Wednesday and again I am back with one interesting case study of biochemistry. I will not disclose the topic of this case study, you will come to know about it as the video advances. So please watch this video till the end. So the case description is, a 45 year old male is admitted for routine work. Attending intern collected 5 ml of blood in pain vacutainer at 8 am for various organ function tests including blood sugar. The time of sample processing was 11 am and the report was received at 12 noon. All laboratory results were normal except blood glucose which was 42 mg per deciliter. Uncertain biochemistry requested for repeat blood sample in correct vacutainer. Now let's see what are the questions. The first question is, what is the reason of low blood glucose value in blood collected in plain vacutainer? So the reason of low blood glucose value in blood collected in plain vacutainer is, plain vacutainer doesn't contain any anti-glycolytic agent. So there will be spontaneous glycolysis will be occurring, which results in a low blood glucose. So the correct vacute for the collection of blood for the glucose estimation is sodium fluoride vacuum. Sodium fluoride vacuum contains fluoride as a anti-glycolytic agent which will inhibit the enolase enzyme of glycolytic pathway. So there will be stoppage of glycolysis and it will prevent the loss of glucose by spontaneous glycolysis in collected blood. So that is the answer of first question. This is the picture of fluoride vacuum. It is a grey color tube. So you have to collect the blood for glucose estimation in this fluoride vacuum. And if you don't collect the blood in fluoride vacuum for the glucose estimation, then it can result in a lower blood glucose value. In, uh, to, in the case description, as you can see that person is completely normal, but the blood glucose level was 42 mg per deciliter. So that is towards the hypoglycemia. So it can result in a misdiagnosis. So that's why you should collect the blood for the glucose estimation in this fluoride vacuum. Second question is, what is the rate of loss of blood glucose if blood is collected in a plain vacuum? So the rate of loss of blood glucose if blood is collected in plain vacutainer is 10 mg per deciliter per hour. In this case, 3 hour gap is there since the time of collection and actual analysis. So it will result in a loss of 30 mg per deciliter. So that is the answer of second question. Third question is, what all types vacutainers are being used in various investigation? What vacutainer is recommended for collection of blood for blood glucose estimation and why? So this is the picture showing the various type of vacutainers which is used in a clinical laboratory for various investigation. First vacuum is a EDTA tube. It is used for the estimation of CBC and estimation of glycated hemoglobin. Second tube is the red color tube which is a pain tube and it is used for all major biochemistry tests as well as for the serology test. Third tube is the green color tube which is a heparin tube. It is used for the electrolyte estimation as well as for the ABG that is arterial blood gas analysis. And the fourth one is the sodium citrate tube which is used for various coagulation studies. So that is the answer of third question. Fourth question is what is the preferred sample for blood glucose estimation? So the plasma is the preferred sample for the blood glucose estimation because all the criteria for the blood glucose report interpretation are laid down based on a plasma glucose value. Apart from this, serum is extracted from the blood once the blood is clotted. So it takes few minutes. So this delayed, this delay in separating serum from the blood alters the blood glucose value. Hence, the plasma is preferred over serum for blood glucose result. So that is the fourth question. Fifth and last question is, mention various biochemical methods for glucose estimation. Which method is commonly used in routine diagnostic labs? And what are the normal values of FBS, RBS and PP2BS? So the various biochemical methods for the glucose estimation are 
First one is the glucose oxidase and peroxidase, that is GODPOD. Second one is the Follin Wu method. Third one is the hexokinase method. And among these three, glucose oxidase peroxidase method is the commonly used in routine diagnostic lab. And the normal value of FBS, that is fasting blood sugar, is 70 to 100 milligram per deciliter. Normal value of RBS, that is random blood sugar, is 80 to 140 milligram per deciliter, and the normal value of PP2BS is up to 140 milligram per deciliter. So that is all about today's video. These are my references. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe Biochemistry Basics by Dr. Amit, and don't forget to press the bell icon so you can get all the notifications from it. Thank you.